Dungu. I served in the U.S. Navy. You know, I attained the rank of E5. My classification was rated in second class. Now, I got assigned to a naval communications station on the Northwest Cape in Australia. So I was I was allowed to go home for 15 days leave, and, and then I was to report to um, Travis Air Force Base in Northern California to get on a flight fly to Hawaii and then get on another flight to fly from Hawaii to, to the northwest cape of Australia. So my first flight from Travis, that was a, a commercial airliner that the military leased to be able to fly guys out to Hawaii. And they uh, got there and it was about a five hour layover. So we just kind of hung out around where we were supposed to be, figuring we didn't want to get too far away, or we might not make it where we were going to go. So it came time to report in. We all re so we reported in where we were supposed to go to get this next flight, and they proceeded to tell us that they didn't have room for everybody. And in the military, there's a, there's a saying that says, rank has its privileges. The higher the rank you are, you go. The lower rank guys, they get kicked off. So there was about a dozen of us that were low, low enough rank. They told us, well, you're going to be here for another week because there's only one flight a week to where I was going. So we, several of us went up to, they called it ACCO. It's an acronym, acronym that the military used for transportation. But we went to the Air Force ACCO base and told them we've been bumped off our flight. And they wanted to know, wanted, we wanted to know, did they have any kind of transit barracks or something like that that we could stay at because we were going to be in Hawaii for a week. And so they wanted to see our orders, they checked us all out, and then they sent us to a, their, one of their transit barracks. So I had like a week vacation in Honolulu, Hawaii, on the military, free, okay? So we went to Waikiki Beach and we rode around the island. We had a great time. So our week was up, we reported back, got ready to go, and they told us again, don't have enough room for everybody. And this time they bumped off higher ranking guys than us. So I spent another five days on the island, same transit barracks, and some of these higher ranking guys they pull some strings somewhere because we, we they made a special flight for us, so we left. So I was going to spend 12 days in Hawaii, free. So we took off. We flew we flew from Hickam Air Force Base to an air airfield in the American Samoas. We landed there at night. So other than the airport building, you really couldn't see a whole lot. And we left the American Samoas, and we flew to Christchurch, New Zealand to a Royal New Zealand Air Force Base, and we had a little bit of a layover there for refueling, and then we flew from there to the eastern coast of Australia. We landed at an Australian Air Force Base called Richmond, and that was where the flight crew had to stop. They were allowed to fly so many hours in a 24-hour period. So we had this 24-hour layover. We get off the plane, and there's all these Australian cab drivers. Hey, come on, we'll take you down to Sydney. We'll pick you, bring you back the next morning. So we piled in the cabs and we went down to Sydney. And they took us to the area, it's called King's Cross. It was where guys from in country went for R&R. &R. So we stayed in a hotel overnight. We went out and partied with the Australians and their bars and stuff. Went, come back, went to bed. Up, up the next morning, the cab driver's there. He took us back to, up to the Air Force base, got back on the plane, and we flew all the way across the, to Australia. Now, where I was going in Australia, if you laid a map of the United States over Australia, I was up in, this, in the Washington, Oregon area. And okay? the biggest city on the West Coast was down near Los Angeles. In between was pretty much nothing. All the big population areas on the east coast of Australia. So we landed we landed and it's desert. It's hundred and some degrees. We get off the plane, we go get on a non-air conditioned Navy school bus, 
and ride 30 some miles to where the base is. And we get there and we get off and we're met by people and they get us herded into where we're supposed to go and where we're supposed to live and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and, and then it, it took a couple of days to get every all get us all settled in and to find out where our assignments were going to be. You know, I went to a place called the my I got assigned to a, a place called the Message Center, and what that was, anybody that wanted to send information or talk to anybody on the base I was on, that all came into where I work. And anybody on my base that wanted to talk to anybody out in the world, that all went back out through where I work. And I spent, uh, I, was, I was there 17 and a half months. And uh, during the time I was there, I could take tests and do other things and be promoted. So I was there six months about when I was able to test for the E4 position and I passed that and made E4. And that's the higher up you go, the more money you made. So that was nice. And then about six months later, I was eligible to do the same thing for E5. So I was only in the Navy 18, 19 months and I was already in E5. And that put me right in the middle of the enlisted rankings. They go from E1 to E9. And where I work, our supervisor was in E6 or first class. And I was like the assistant in there when he didn't come to work and I was the boss. Okay? And um, it just happened that near the end of my tour, the fellow that was my boss, he had to leave. He went home on a emergency medical leave because his mom got real sick. So then I became the boss. And then when his replacement came in, I had to train his replacement so then he could take over when I left. He actually took over before I left. And uh, while, I was, while I was in Australia, they had, uh, we could play, they had an intramural softball league, they had bowling alley, they had swimming pool, uh, basketball courts, you could go fishing. My base, the Cape stuck out from the mainland 33 miles, and we were three miles from the end of the Cape. And you could drive up to the end, they had a great big pier there that people could fish off of. Um, three guys, while I was stationed there, caught this fish called a grouper that weighed over 600 pounds. It made the Navy has a paper called the Navy Times. That story made the Navy Times. People that came to the base to be stationed there before I left would ask us about it because they had read about this in the Navy Times. And uh, I, pl I played mostly softball, flag football. I was a pretty good. We played, we played something called fast softball, and I was a pretty good player. I played third base. I played for the Message Center where I work. Um, one season part of another one. And around December of 67, there was a communications unit in Christchurch, New Zealand, and issued an invitation to our base to send a softball team to New Zealand to play New Zealand softball teams in a tournament. So I ended up being the starting third baseman on that team. So we flew to um, almost about two weeks before Christmas, we flew over to New Zealand and stayed there for a week, played softball sometimes twice a day. And back then, they played softball in New Zealand like baseball is here. Everywhere you went, there was softball. Everybody's playing softball. So we ended up beating everybody that we played. So they asked us, would we mind playing a team of all-stars? And we said, sure, we play. We played this team of all-stars in a park that held 12,000 people, and it was packed. I never played in front of that many people before, most of the time, half a dozen maybe, you know. So we played this game, and we won two to one. So that was pretty neat. And so when we get right now, we get ready to go home. And what do you think happens? They don't have enough room for everybody to go back. So they asked for volunteers. So the married guys got 
they were taking them and it was about a half a dozen others. Well, I had met a fellow at the communications unit. He was from Percocy. He played, he was a year, he was in, with the Penn Ridge. He played soccer. He graduated in 65, I graduated in 64 from Central Bucks. We knew each other. Once we saw each other and got to talk and we realized we played soccer against one another. Well, I stayed with him the second week and that was over Christmas of 67. So I spent my Christmas of 67 in New Zealand. And New Zealand was a neat place where the landscape, I don't know if anybody ever been to Michigan, but it reminded me of that a little bit. And um, they had old American cars yet on the road from like the 40s. We have, somewhere I have a picture of me sitting on a running board of a car on a, in a street in Christchurch, New Zealand. And uh, we, okay, then we, next, next flight took us back to Australia. And then about less than a month, I left, I left Australia the 7th of May in 1970. And less than a month before that, we got word that there was a tropical cyclone coming. 